Hello everyone and welcome back to our series of discussions in Understanding the Self Course. Welcome back also to my YouTube channel and this is me, Sir June Michael, your Philosophy and Social Science Mentor. For today's video, we are going to talk about William James, a well-noted and popular Harvard psychologist. We are going to talk about the idea of William James on the self. So are you willing to listen? Are you willing to learn something today? Then keep on watching this video until the end. James was one of the earliest psychologists who studied and conceptualized the self. So as a psychologist, William James thought that the self has two aspects and these two concepts that he gave were the I and the me, in which for William James, the I refers to the thinking, acting, and the feeling self. On the other hand, the me for William James refers to the physical characteristics as well as the psychological capabilities of the self. However, in the late 19th century, William James had published a book entitled The Principles of Psychology. And in this book, James particularly discussed that the self has constituents. And what are these constituents of the self? These are the material self, the social self, the spiritual self, and the pure ego. In this discussion, we are only going to discuss these, these two constituents of the self. These are the material self and the spiritual self. According to William James, the material self has four components. And what are these components? These are our bodies, number one. Second, our clothes. Third, our immediate family. And number four refers to our home. So let us discuss this one, one by one, because according to James, these four components deeply affect the things because we have put so much investments to these particular components uh, in, in the creation of ourselves, in the development of ourselves. So we cannot take these things for granted in ourselves. So number one, the innermost part of our material self is our body. Now that, so we are investing so much to our body. Because we are directly attached to the commodities that we cannot live without. You know, we cannot live without the body. Siyempre. So, uh, are we just mere uh, thinking beings? No, we are not just mere thinking beings. We have a body. And therefore, we have to make sure that this body functions well. That this body lives well. You know? Because if our body experiences illness or disorder, then it directly affects us. Diba? Diba? For example, pag nagugutom tayo, diba? we feel the hunger. Pag nauuhaw tayo, we feel the thirst. Diba? When, we are, when we are tired, when we are stressed, then we, we can feel these things in our life, in ourselves, because this is directly connected to our body. And our body is basically part of who? And what we are and so we have also some certain uh, attachments to our body or we have our own closeness to our body and it only means therefore that the bottom line here is that our body is so valuable to us you know whatever we do to our body we are doing it to ourselves so if we take care of our body it is also the same as taking care of ourselves Pero kung pinabayaan natin yung ating katawan, inaabuso natin yung ating katawan dahil sa mga klasik-klasik bisyo, ano pa yung mga tinitake in natin o iniinom natin o kinakain natin na nakasisira sa ating katawan, then definitely that shows that we do not actually take care of our body. Now, I have to tell you that our body is our life. When our body dies, 
then totally our self will also die. Kailangan nating ingatan ang ating katawan. Okay. The next component of the material self is our clothes. So our clothes are part of our selves. You know, this is a saying that says that clothing is a form of self-expression and that we choose and wear clothes that are reflection of ourselves. Ano yung sinusuod natin? It speaks of what kind of person we are accordingly, according to psychologists, especially William James. So, in the principle of uh, the philosophy of dress, according to Herman Lotz, James believed that clothing is an essential part of the material self. The essential part. You know, the way we dress, the way we uh, lost ourselves with garments, it speaks what kind of person we are. You know, uh, that's why siguro makikita ko yung sarili ko dito. No? As a person, ako ay I, I just wear simple clothes. Well, that speaks of what kind of person I am. Because I'm a simple person. And I don't usually wear expensive clothes. <laughs> you know, my wife would sometimes uh, tell me to buy expensive clothes and I would immediately tell her, no, 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 no. I can still make use of the old ones. No, uh, my my closings are just countable. We count lang yung mga ano ko, yung pantalon ko. I think I have only five. No, so ano lang? May dalawang sapatos lang ako. Isang chinela. So yun. I I I live in a simple life. No, because I was trained to become simple. So, ayun, you, my, my clothing speaks of my identity, of who I am. Ayun, uh, another example is our uh, uniform. You know, our uniform is a clothing. It's not just simply a fashion, but our uniform speaks of our profession, of our status, of our identity. Diba? So, that is why clothing is part of our material self. The third component of the material self is the family. You know, the family is directly connected to our own self. Our parents and our siblings are, are very significant parts of ourselves. You know, when somebody dies in the family, it seems like there's also part of us that is also dying. You know, what they do or become affects us. You know, when someone uh, some, some members of our family uh, graduates or their lives became successful. We feel that the success is also being part of us. No? We can also feel their success. And uh, we can also feel that their, their uh, downfall is also part of us. You know, pag mayroong mga problema sa, sa pamilya, naapektahan yung tao. Kaya nga, but my, my family problems, it's they, these are directly affecting us, our, our uh, self as a person. Kaya nga ako, I can always understand why some students could not uh, concentrate in their studies because of family problems. Kasi kung ano yung mga problema natin sa bahay, minsan uh, naapektahan talaga tayo directly. Huh? Because our family is directly connected to our material aspect of the self. The fourth component of the material self is the home. You know, there's a difference between a house and a home. What's the difference? The house is a structure, a building. But a home is where family is truly existing. You know, the home is where our heart is. It is the earliest nest of our selfhood. It is where our self was tried to develop from the very beginning. You know, our home nourishes, shaped, and uh, developed us to become uh, full-blown human beings, become fully humans. You know, the home is directly connected to us. In fact, sa bahay natin minsan, no, may mga may mga favorite tayong lugar like sa kwarto. They keep on reminding us of something in the past. You know, the home will always remind us 
Parang yun nila nga, uh, there's no place like home. There's no place like home. So, our home is directly connected and as extension of ourselves. We can clearly see and understand ourselves through the reflection of our homes. Now, let's go to the second constituent of the self according to William James. So, according to William James, the one of the four constituents of the self is the spiritual self. What do we mean by the spiritual self? So, so for James, the spiritual self is the most intimate. This is the inner subjective part of the self. So, inner. It's in the innermost part of who and what we are as a person. This is the most intimate version of ourselves because uh, it is through in this spiritual self that our spiritual experiences, that our spiritual longings can also be satisfied. You know, many people would say that there is no such thing as the spiritual self. But according to psychologists, According to philosophers and theologians, there will always be a spiritual self. Well, in the philosophical perspective, the philosophers like Socrates, Aquinas, and many other Western philosophers have been telling us that the self is composed of body and spirit. You know, that there is something in us, something in our self that is intangible, that is abstract you know, there is something in us that um, cannot be seen in the real life that is our spiritual self you know I can give you example you know human beings can never be satisfied materially human beings can never have material satisfaction why because the material things, yes, we need them. We need them as part of the necessity of our material self. But, you know, there is something in us that we keep on longing for something greater. There is something in us that we keep on searching for something that is not in this world. Something that belongs to the supernatural. Something that belongs to the metaphysical aspects of our human experience. And this is spiritual aspect of ourselves theologically speaking our spiritual self is coming from God who is a pure spirit also our spiritual self is the one that is leading us to seek or search for something beyond in this physical world it leads us to the search of the metaphysical beings in this life can give us ultimate satisfaction. You know, let me go back to what I said a while ago that we can never be satisfied materially. Yes. For instance, you are hungry right now, so you eat, right? And you eat so that you will be satisfied. But tomorrow, you get hungry again. And the following day, you get hungry again. Every day, you get hungry, right? Another one, are thirsty of water so go to the breath and get a water then you satisfy your thirst however the following day or later on you get thirsty again that is why our material aspects have this longings that we need to satisfy yes on the other hand these are continuous you know, it's perpetual nothing material self every day yung material longings natin kaya nga we will never be satisfied kasi we will keep on longing for material things in this life as we continue our existence in the world however there is something in us you know, there is something in us that cannot be materially satisfied and that is our spiritual self our spiritual longings in this life our soul our spirit needs also spiritual nourishment and the material things cannot give us spiritual satisfaction because our spiritual longings only need spiritual guidance. It only needs spiritual 
blessings and graces that comes from our God, that comes from the religion that we are practicing in this life. So those are the ideas about the material self and the spiritual self that come from William James, a Harvard psychologist. And so we realize that uh, from this perspective of the self, indeed, we have this spiritual longings in this life as well as our material uh, longings. So we, have, we need to fulfill also the needs of our material aspects because we are human beings, we have these material aspects. However, we cannot also uh, deny the fact, the reality, that we have a spiritual self in our lives, that we have a spiritual longing that can only be fulfilled through practicing our religion, through praying to our God, through believing that it is God, it is our God who can give us ultimate satisfaction in this life, that it is our God who can give us ultimate meaning of who and what we really are. Sir Jun, and thank you for watching and thank you for being part of this discussion. I hope that you have learned something from our video discussion today. See you next vlog. Bye-bye!